Jesus is my father, he will never, never fail me. I say thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. How to profit from a trial? How to profit from a trial? We might not be praying too much tonight, but we might be gaining a lot of um, experience. And I always encourage people to have your Bible and have your your pens and your book. By now, you should have a book of all the sermons we're having. If you've been keeping tabs on the sermons we've been doing since we started almost two years ago, you should have two or three booklets full by now that you can always go back to report. How to profit from a trial. Trials are things that test who you are. Trials are what? They are things that test who you are. They are things that test what is inside of you. They are things that look deep into you. They test your resolve. They test your faith. They test your religion. They test your preparation. They test your physical strength. They test your emotional strength. They also test your spiritual strength. If you have never gone through a trial before, <laughs> I don't know if I should say that you should, I pray that you never should, but it's impossible not to go through a trial. It's impossible not to. One of the daily uh, Christian readings today, and I was just going through the word of God today, you know, I saw uh, James 1, 2 and 3. He says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Some Bible say perseverance, patience. Now, the Bible teaches us that trials and tribulations, they are the doorways to enter God's kingdom. Trials and tribulations, they are actually the doorways. They are the things that are almost like keys to God's kingdom. Look at Acts 14.22. It says, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and saying, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. What am I saying, brethren? You can be sure that you will not escape trials and tribulations. <laughs> if you are on the face of this earth, more so if you are a child of God. Trials and tribulations, they will come. They will come. That's one thing you need to understand that it's impossible that, that trials will not come. It's impossible that tribulations will not come. It is impossible. So you need to understand that. And once you have understood it, then you can now start working towards how to manage them when they do come. A child of God must necessarily be prepared to overcome trials and tribulations and, you know, come out better on the other side of it. A tribulation is usually a cause of great trouble or suffering or a state of great trouble or suffering. So when you say you're in a tribulation, something has caused some great trouble to come to you or some suffering to come to you. Trials, like it says, is a test. It's something that is trying to prove you. I preached this a few days ago. The fact that God allows things to happen to prove you. You know, I, I can't remember what we're talking about again now. Uh, you know, when we're to, uh, you know, just a couple of days ago, that God does allow things to prove you. you, you he wants to see if you can come out on the other side better. He wants you to also know your status in his kingdom. And his trials and tribulations that he allowed. And that time we mentioned about Job. The fact that someone like Job had to go through a trial that he had no business, uh, you know, being part of. But he had to go through it. Because that was what was going to make him even a better character. I have always struggled with the concept of joy in my trials. Like, like we read in James 1, 2 to 3. You know, it says, my brother counts it all joy. When you fall into various trials and of course tribulations, how do you live with that concept of joy inside trials? I mean, how many of us have ever gone to God and said, Lord, I want you to try me today? 
I want you to, I want you to try, I want you to prove that I can have joy when you try me. How many of us bring on the trial, Lord? You will see that I will be joyful throughout it. How many of us have ever done that? I'm sure probably none of us, or very few of us. <laughs> How many of us have said, Oh Lord, your word says in trials I, I should count it joy. So I know the trials you are going to bring me will bring me joy. So bring on the trials, God. How many of us have, have, have ever gone and said that to God? I'm sure that, I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. None of us have probably done that. Why? Because trials are typically not a lot of fun. A trial is usually not a lot of fun. And when you are in the middle of a trial or a tribulation, it often doesn't bring peace. At least not in the midst of the trial. Maybe at the end of it all, when you go to the other side and you see the good that was inside and the plan that God has, has for you, then you can say, oh, this is where God was going. This is where God was going. But while you're in the middle of it, brethren, it is not easy. I mean, you can say, I have peace in the midst of trial. Let's say, oh, hey, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. I'm trusting God for this. We are believing God for this. And we have peace. I've heard many Christian saints. Oh, I have peace over this. When they actually are anything but peace. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's when real trials come that you know your, your, your status, like I was saying. How prepared were you for what was coming? How spiritually strengthened were you? How emotionally tough? Your emotional toughness, everything comes to the fore. So how do you profit from that kind of situation? Some will say, I have peace in the midst of a trial. Fine. That is understandable. But can you say you have joy in the midst of a trial? Can you possibly say you have joy? Oh, you can say, oh, I have peace. But can you say joy? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm feeling joyful right now. Hmm. Feeling joyful when they are about to evict you uh, from your mortgage. Feeling joyful when You've been told that they're about to send people away from the office and somebody has told you your name is on the list of those they're about to send away. How can one have joy in that kind of a situation? Brother James wrote this letter to the Christians of his time that had been forced to live you know, in foreign lands to escape persecution for their faith. Remember when the church first started, after a while when they were getting too comfortable, the Lord brought persecution. He deliberately sent persecution to them. <laughs> and that scattered many of the Christians. Why what was God trying to do? God was trying to, was trying to send uh, Christianity abroad. So in that, because they had built a group of very, very strong Christians, wherever they go, the thing will germinate there. The thing will grow there. So he found a way to get them persecuted, put evil in the hearts of those who are around them, who are ruling them at that time and send them up on persecution. So, Brother James was writing a letter to this kind of Christians. They have been driven away from where they live to go and live somewhere else by persecution. And nowadays, you see Christians who living in, in foreign lands. I mean, some of us are living in lands that are foreign to our place of birth right now. You know, who have been forced to live in hard circumstances because of the idea that they must somehow start at the bottom of the ladder. So to say, I've heard many um, Americans say that when you come here, you have to start at the bottom of the ladder. It doesn't matter if you are already a neurosurgeon in your country. It doesn't matter if you are already a CEO of a big company in your country. It doesn't matter if you have MBAs and all in a long list of things. Something brings you to that point where they say you must go and they want to find out if your degree is an equivalent. When you're a medical doctor or, or that kind of profession, you are even in worse trouble. They make you go back and pass. You go and start working on that. I mean, when, when somebody was a full consultant, you know, a head of a department in a big hospital away from here, comes here, even from where somewhere like you, and they still tell you that you have to pass the exams here. It's a place of trial. Why? Because the fact that you are not at the level of the established professional that you were, you now have to do lowly jobs. Maybe you are, like I said, a professor of neurosurgery or a senior consultant of neurosurgery in another country. You now get here and somebody says you must start from the CNA level. 
<laughs> not even a nursing level, but a CNA level. And it's the only way you're going to feed yourself. And the CNA pays $10 an hour, maybe $8 an hour or something. You that you were on $200 an hour where you were before. But you had to have a change. That's the kind of thing that James was, you know, talking. In fact, he was talking to in those days. You see, nations are suddenly shocked by incidents also. Like the Newton massacre we had uh, like a month or a half ago. You know, have absolutely no meaning. You cannot, you cannot be explained in any sensible way. These are the kind of tribulations we are talking about. I mean, to make matters worse, with all that shooting, some people are even saying that it's better to have more guns. <laughs> so that somehow each person can shoot each other like in the days of Billy the Kid, you know, and Western outlaws of those days. Django. <laughs> Hallelujah. But then trials test our fabric. Satanic trials, they are even worse. Because they have behind them spiritual empowerment of an evil nature, so the trial period may even be longer than necessary if the evil force is not stopped in its tracks. It might even be worse. So in the days of James, just like now, they were faced with trials, both literally and, and figuratively. You know, and they were also being tempted continuously to abandon their faith because of the trials they were going through. I mean, when people are telling you that uh, the the only way you can be stay in America, for instance, is for you to go and marry a third party, somebody you don't even know, and compromise yourself. That is a testing of your faith because you need to you need to internalize the fact that I am going against the will of God. That's not God's will for you to go and marry a third party you don't know because you want to stay in America. This might be difficult for those who are Americans to understand. But there are situations also in America here where your faith is continuously being tried. Your faith is continuously being tried. For instance, the word of God says that um, you know, that the, God doesn't like an effeminate spirit. He doesn't want a man to be with a man and a woman to be with a woman. And today you are forced to live with situations where it's being pushed in your thrust in your face every day of the day. Those are the kind of things, brethren, that tempt you to abandon your faith. Because you'll be asking, where is God in all the middle of all this? So on the surface of it, Brother James was calling for them to stand firm in their trials. The actual problem, however, brethren, was not the trials of life, no, but the temptation, like I'm saying, to turn from Christ in order to avoid those trials and temptations. Many of us are in situations where we're almost turning away from God. Because of the temptations we are going through. There are women who are considering a man comes to them to proposition them today, even though they are in their husband's house, and the husband can make uh, enough for them to take care of themselves. And of course, some of them are a bit greedy. Maybe they, want, they want to live lifestyles that are above their means. When some rich fellow comes, and they, and they find themselves in a motel room with him, so that they can just get it. The extra $1,000 to buy that bag we don't really need. Or even honestly to, even a situation whereby they need it to actually go and pay the rent. These are things that are happening every day, brethren. So, we're talking of trials and tribulations, temptations that want to force you to turn away from God. I mean, how many of us can honestly say that the trials of life don't cause us to consider the same thing from time to time? Many of us are like that. That trials come. I've had many people say, Pastor, when I was in the world, I had jobs. When I was in the world, I could do anything I wanted. When I was in the world, I could move the way I wanted. Now things are holding me down. I am not enjoying my life anymore. And you're saying somehow it's good to be a Christian? That is what Brother James was addressing in James 1, 2, and 3. When he says the trials are going to come, he says, what well, you should do what? Count it all joy when the trials come. What is joy? What is this joy he's talking about? Joy is defined as a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. So you are expected somehow in the middle of that crisis to have great pleasure and happiness. How is that possible? How is that possible? 
Job 8, 19 to 20. In fact, if there's somebody in the Bible that went through that kind of trial we're talking about, where, he, where his, his wife got to his stage and said, why don't you just curse God and die? That is, you forget your faith, abandon your faith. Curse the, the God that is the God of your faith and just die off and let it be over with. That's what his wife said. Job 8, 19, 20 says, Behold, this is the joy of his way. That is the Lord's way. And out of the earth, others will go. Behold, God will not cast away the blameless, nor will he uphold the evil doers. What is the Bible saying there is that even though you are going through what you are going through, that is the way God sees joy. God sees joy in taking you through a trial where you persevere. And the Bible says, Behold, God never casts away those who are blameless. So if you are going through something and it's very, very tough, the Bible is giving you the pleasure of knowing that it's God's way of being happy with you, that he's trying you. Oh, it says, have you considered Job, my son? He was asking the, the, the enemy. Have you considered him? That he's upright in his way. And for that reason, Job went through a trial. So that it could be proved. Hallelujah. Paul had to tell the Romans in Romans 5 3. He says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. The only way to profit from a trial, brethren, this morning, is to come out of a trial with head held up high. Joy flowing despite the circumstances. That's what the Bible is teaching us this morning. Only God can be trusted to produce that kind of outcome. Only God, brethren. Only your God can be trusted to do what? To produce that kind of outcome. Psalm 3 verse 3 says, But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. The lifter of all my head. Only God can put your head and raise it up like this. When the circumstances are saying that that head must be bowed. It must just be bowed. As far as the enemy is concerned, head must be bowed. Only God can say, no, my son. No, my son. Despite what you are going through, no, my daughter. Despite what you are going through, your head will be lifted up. I mean, when Psalm 512 says, For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as you will shield. That is the way you know that no matter what you are going through, as long as you are living a life that is tending towards righteousness, as you are trying to seek his kingdom in your actions, your behaviors, your attitudes, your thoughts, he will surround you with favor in ways you don't even understand. The psalmist had to pray at some point. He says, oh Lord, See how my enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death. Psalm 27 verse 6 also says, That my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of God. I will sing and make music to the Lord. We're going to talk about that psalmist now, David, because he went through a lot. He went through a lot. Psalm 28 verse 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am held by my heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. When you are going through trials, oh, David went through a lot of trials before he came to me. A lot of trials. A king, King Saul, who was sure that this fellow was here to take his, uh, was here to take his throne, and was also jealous of his exploits. I made up his mind, the only good place for David to be was inside the grave. So he was chasing him everywhere for years. He said, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am held. My heart lives for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. The only good outcome of a trial or great tribulations, brethren, is that we come out with joy at the end of it. That joy can only be found in resting completely in ex the expressions of God found in his word. 
perseverance which we have thought about on this line before is supposed to be the outcome, but it's supposed to be the outcome of overcoming trials and tribulations. So for a child of God, they enter the proverbial tunnel of darkness when trials are coming. They stay through the course, stay through it. They see the light at the tunnel's end and they come out of it laughing, smiling, and somehow looking cleaner and brighter than when they went into it. And like I said, there's some fellow that went through all that I'm saying right now. And what's that fellow's name? His name was David. David went through a lot. He went through a lot, brethren. And I want us to quickly look at the area, one or two things about it. There's a place in First Samuel 30, if you remember very well. There's a place in First Samuel 30. And if you have your Bible, you can open to First Samuel 30 there. There's a place in First Samuel 30. When he, his family had been taken away, he went on a battle and he came back. I want to show you how to profit from, from a trial. He, he, he went through a lot of, he, he they went to battle, came back, and at the end of it, what was it to come back to come and meet? He had taken his wife, he had taken his, uh, his children, he had taken that of his uh, troops and all that. And there was a lot of trouble. There was a lot of trouble. He had no way out. He didn't know what to do. But if you look there, the Bible says something that is very, very uh, pertinent to how to profit from a trial. Open your Bibles there. Speak. Let's just read it together. I'm going through it right now too. Let's look at it very well. It was a conflict with the Am uh, Amalekites. He dealt with them, did everything they had to do, then he came back. He came back. And then what happened? What happened, brethren? He got there, he said, What shall I do, Lord? Everybody was crying. They had taken their they had taken their uh, they had, they, 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 uh, their wives. They had done everything to them. Came back, it was burned with fire. The whole place was burned with fire. They dealt, dealt with them in Ziklag. Came to the city, burned. Their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Samuel 30. David and the people who were with him, they wept. They wept. It was a trial. A trial. And they had no more power to weep. That's how far they were wretched. They wept. They're taking his two wives. Taking his two wives, Abigail and uh, Ahinoma. The Bible says David was greatly distressed. Even his men were speaking of stoning him because they're so grieved, so hard. They were grieving for their sons and daughters who they could not find. The Bible says in Samuel 30, 1 Samuel 36, this is what David strengthened himself, the Lord is God. Some versions say David encouraged himself. In the Lord is God. The first thing you need to do, brethren, when that kind of time comes, but it will surely come. We're not going through a trial or tribulation now. There will be times when it's like that. The first thing we need to do is to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. The first thing we need to do is to do what? Is to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. There was a time also in, um, let me speak, remind me now. There was a time also in, uh, uh, I think, Second Samuel. Second Samuel, yes. It says, For by thee I have run through a troop, but my God have I left over a wall. That was another trial that David had to go through. So, what David did was he did what? He used the word of the law. If you look there in Second Samuel 22 31, he says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust him. The word of the Lord is tried. His way is perfect. So when trials come, you go to the place where that has been tried. This is the word of God. The word of God has been tried. When we have these trials, when we have tribulations, brethren, oh, we go through trials and tribulations and the ministers of God, children of God, those who want to serve him properly, those who want to do his will, you know what you are going through. 
I don't know right now unless the Holy Spirit tells me about you. But individually, you know the kind of things that you would not want to be the way they are. But for some reason that is beyond your, say, your control right now, they are that way. He says there in 2 Samuel 32 31, the word of the Lord is tried. That is, the word of God has gone through trials and tribulations and come out of it successfully. So when you go back again to second um, to first Samuel, and you see there where it says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. The first thing David did was, let me look at this, let me look at the word of God. He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Then he said to the priest Abiathar and Bimelech's son, bring the effort here. They brought the effort and then he went down. When you are in trial, the only way out is to ask God, which way out? <laughs> Lord, which way out? I am here now. I got no way to escape this. Which way? How do I come out of this master? How do I come out of this Holy Spirit of God? How can I come out of this? Lord, I'm right there right now. No way out. No way out. Nothing to do. I am encouraging myself knowing that you are there for me, Lord. But in the midst of it all, Master, how do I come out of it? Which is exactly what Brother David did next. To ask for the effort, that was a sign of the presence of the Lord in those days. He put it on so that the prophetic anointing would come upon him. And then he asked, how do I come out of this situation, Lord? I went to fight the war you sent me to fight. I won the battle, came back now. Wife and kids are gone. My people want to stone me, Lord. How do I come out of this? That's the question he asked the Lord. And the Lord answered him because he was asking, Lord, can I go and fight this? You have taken my family. Shall I pursue that army that took my family? Shall I go and, you know, I have the skills you've given me, Lord. Can I overcome this trial? How do I go about it? And then, because he asked the Lord, the Lord told him, He says, For sure, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, you will recover all. You know what I love about God? When the Lord says you will recover all, He always adds some extra. <laughs> any situation, any trial we are in, any tribulation, the Lord is saying, My daughter, my son, my church, my ministry, or whatever he speak addressing at that time, and he says, you will recover all. He's saying, at the end of it, he's still going to add something more to it. So when the trial and tribulation come, if you want to profit, encourage yourself in the Lord, go and ask him how to, what, Lord, what am I going to do come out of this? Go ask him that. And when he does answer you, you take the step that will take you out. The Bible says, so David went, he and 600 men who are with him. And then, of course, from there, the, 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 the doors open. The, the methodology and the, the manifestation rocked back there to the, his family. And that's how he was able to come, overcome that trial and tribulation. So many times also, he was, like I said, being chased by the, the king at that time, which was uh, Saul. I give you the example of Second Samuel when he was being chased. He was being chased and he was going through a trial. And what, what did he do? By the help of the Lord also. He says, I was able to make a way through the wall. By the help of the Lord, I was able to go over a wall. There are walls that shot you and I. If you look at the um, Psalm 1829, Bible in basic English. It says, by your help, I have made a way through the wall which was shutting me in. By the help of my God, I have gone over a wall. A wall that was shutting him in. Many of us in trials and tribulations, it's like the four walls are actually trying to squeeze the life out of us. Like they're trying to squeeze the life out of us. But it says, I found a way through the wall. That is what David did every time. He had trials, but he always profited from trial. When he went after his uh, his soldier's wife, he still profited from it at the end of the day. He gave back to Solomon, who was the next king. 
David always found a way to profit from, from every trial. And how do you profit from a trial, brethren? Also, what David did was he was a worshiper. Worshiper. Somebody who could connect to God. It's not enough to just pick up uh, music and be singing music or playing music. No. Your link to God with the music or whatever you're singing is the true worship. It's to connect. Worshiping connects you to God. And that's something that King David was very good at. He knew how in a, in a minute you would connect to God. You connect to God. You connect to God. Once he gets on his knees, I'm just imagining the kind of knees that David must have had. They must have been very, very callosed knees because he was six times a day. <laughs> six times a day, the Bible says he was, I think at least it was six or three, I can't remember. You Bible scholar, we know that and I can go research it. He used to find that time with his God. So, despite trials, every go and look at the Bible, go and look, study David very well. You see, every trial he came out of it. Every trial. Every trial. He came out of every trial. The son tried to kill him, the son that died. He killed somebody else's husband to take over the woman. Lord dealt with him, but at the end of the day, it was his son, the, the baby of the union, still became king, a very successful king for that matter. He knew how to do it. He knew how to go and romance God. Romancing with his singing. Romancing with his words. And every time he did it, he was always successful. So to profit from trial, we must be good worshippers, is what I'm trying to say right now. We must be Good worshippers. You must be. Another version of it, that's Psalm 1829. Good news translation. It says, You give me strength to attack my enemies and power to overcome their defenses. Trials where you put God first gives you the power to attack the worst enemy. Either it's a witch that is in your locale and is refusing to let your Israel go. Either is a localized witch in your family that is saying that nobody in that family will do well or that the children will be dying, the people will be dying early in the family. Whatever it is, the Bible says you give me strength to attack my enemies and power to overcome their defenses. So when you're in a trial like David, your worship of God, your inquiry of God gives you strength to overpower the worst enemies. Like I said, Joy is at the end of every trial. Joy is at the end of every trial. Early in life, David was facing trials. Saul told him in uh, was it 1 Samuel 17. Yes, 1 Samuel 17, 33, 34. He told him. He made, the guy smoted the Philistine. Everybody started singing out. So it was the greatest uh, warrior around. And the man immediately got very, very jealous. And that was the beginning of his problem. But he always over overcame. How powerful he was was that he even overcame Saul in the end. And he became a happy person in the end. He always came out with joy. And when James says, count it all joy, whatever you are going through, it's because... The, ex the extent of your trial should be the greatness of the joy that comes at the end of it all. It should be the greatness of the joy that, that emanates from it at the end of it all. You want to profit from a trial, you need to be somebody who worships. You need to be somebody who connects to God. You need to be someone who asks for his word and asks him what the situation is. The toughest part usually, let me tell you what the toughest part of it, going from a trial. Is obedience. Obedience. God has told many of us what will make us prosper. It's just left for us to be obedient. Why? Because many of us are in comfort zones. Comfort zones. Who would you put on comfort zones? Many of us are already in comfort zones. We're in aggressive comfort zones. What do I call them aggressive? 
The comfort zones are ministering to us that we are comfortable. They are ministering in all kinds of ways. They are telling us, don't worry, look where you are, it's just good for you. And because it pleases your flesh, you are telling yourself, nothing will be better than this. When Lord is saying that I have a lot more I want to do for you. Oh, I've been through it, so I know what I'm saying. Comfort zone. It takes a lot. But if only we can be obedient when the, when the answers come like David did. Look, here's a guy just coming from a war itself. And they say they've taken your children and you need to go fight some other war for you to be able to take them back. But he wasn't worried. The minute the Lord said go, he was able. You want to come out laughing, smiling, somehow looking clean and bright at the end of it all, brethren? That's the last part. Obedience. It's very tough sometimes. It can be, it can even be life changing. You might have to uproot yourself and do things you don't that you are not thinking of doing before. But one thing about it at the end of it all is that our God finds a way. Our Savior does what He finds a way. End of day, you see some gain. End of day. You see some gain from it all at end of day. And that game is such that you come out with joy. Bow down your head where you are. Just bow down your head. I don't know what you are going through right now. The only thing I know is that what has been preached tonight was from God himself. So it's for somebody out there right now. Maybe one person. Maybe two people. Maybe ten people right now, online right now. Maybe somebody who's going to watch this video one day. The Lord has placed the ability for you to excel. He has placed it right there. But it's left for you to take this step. Bow down your head where you are right now. Just say, Father, where you are right now. Pray and say, Father, I have heard your word. But grant me grace. It's all a grace thing. Grant me the unmerited favor, Lord. Grant me the grace, O oh Lord. Grant me the, the grace to be able to understand and to and to do the right things that at the end of every trial I will come out with joy. You might have peace through the trial, but joy is what matters. Tell God right now, God, I need grace right now. I need grace. Tell him right now, I need grace, Lord. I need grace right now, Father. I need grace. Tell him you need grace now. For the trials you are going through. Tell him you need grace right now. Tell him you need grace. In Jesus' name. Let's pray to a great prayer. Say every trial or tribulation. Program to set my son suddenly. Evaporate by the fire of God. Every trial and tribulation. Program to set my son suddenly. Evaporate by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every trial, every tribulation. Program to set my son suddenly. Evaporate by the fire of the Holy Ghost. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Say trials being enforced by problem expanders, problem elongators, cease for to and pray. Trials being enforced by problem expanders, problem elongators, cease suddenly in the name of Jesus. Let the trials and the tribulations cease right now. Command them to cease right now in the name of Jesus. Command them to cease right now in the name of Jesus. Command them to cease right now in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to cease those tribulations right now. Ask Jehovah to cease the tribulations right now. Ask Jehovah to cease the tribulations right now. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pray this prayer. I receive divine wisdom. I receive divine wisdom to come out of any maze of bewilderment, any perplexity, any confusion, 
any embarrassment, any lack of confidence, and non-achievement in the name of Jesus. I'll repeat it again. I receive divine wisdom to come out of any maze of bewilderment, any perplexity, any confusion, any embarrassment, any lack of confidence, and non-achievement. I receive wisdom to come out of them right now in the name of Jesus. I receive wisdom to come out of them right now in the name of Jesus. I receive wisdom to come out of them right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to give you a minute right now. <laughs> Perhaps there's a trial that you're going through right now. You don't even I want to report it to God right now. I'll just pray in the spirit. And I believe the Lord will help you. You just go ahead and begin to pray right now. You just report it to the Lord right now. Masatori Abagambra. Lancrobo Shegrebo Sopo Safi. Masobra Segrebo Legrebo Santa Pra. Relegrebo Baba Shegrebo Legraba. Mesendele la posa de Grebo. Pelegrebo Safos Cantoria. Magrobo Shegrebo Sopas Agria. Macoba Shekebo Sosco. Megrebo Rima Mamashagobo Sato. Loprosa Legrebo Rime Sengrebo Sata. Megabo Shegrebo Sacabas. You just report that situation, report that trial now. Whatever it is you're going through right now. Masobra Shegrebo, Lord, let your children come out with joy on the other side. Mesegrebo Robo Shegraba Santo Bo. Melegrebo Sobo Shekreb. Just go ahead and magnify his name right now, brethren. Magnify the name of Jehovah right now. In the name of Jesus. Masobra. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. We magnify your holy name. We thank you, Jehovah. You are the man of war. You are the one that has never lost that battle, never lost the war. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. We ask that you have your way, O Lord. Open doors to your children. Open doors right now. Let doors be open right now. Let doors be open, Lord. By your power, by your grace. Let doors be open. By your power, by your grace. Let doors be open. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory be to God. Good morning, everyone in the world. With you. Uh, right now, uh, I just wanted to make an announcement with you. We are trying to send some of the books I have written. We want to send copies to the prisons around us here. Because look, there's so many people in prisons that shouldn't be in prison. I want to send those books for them to understand the things they're going through. And we've asked for, for people to give to give offerings and donations towards it. We want to send like, uh, there, there are about 26 prisons in, in uh, Pennsylvania. And we want to send, we want to send uh, some of those books to those prisons. We want to send five copies each to each library of the, each prison. So that's 130 copies of each book and we have six books we want to send. So we have close to, that's about uh, 780 books we want to send out. So if God is leading you, you need the donations to print because we are giving the books out free of charge. And that's it's not, it's not profitable. We're not trying to do it for profit, brother. What we're trying to do is is give the books out and they're not be sold to the people. So you can go into those libraries and read and study and learn the issues of their lives. That's what we're trying to do. And I'm praying that God can depend on you, brother. There are different ways to reach out. If you remember in Matthew 25, he says, when I was in prison and you came to visit me. That is one of the things that the Lord called having pleased him. He says, Lord, when were you in prison? Oh, if you did it to any of those who are there, you've done it for me. That is why it's a time that we should give. Brother, we should give. We should give to sustain the ministries of God. I keep on appealing. God will do what he wants to do. If it's not sustainable because it's not because God doesn't want to do it, but because God wants to bless. God doesn't need your money or mine. He needs us to be blessed. That's why he, 
He always uses avenues to bless us. So may God depend on you. God is leading you that way. But God is leading you to support the ministry. Glory be to God. I saw again, they sent us a, a new email was yesterday, the day before, that if you don't upgrade our, um, I mean, if you don't upgrade the, uh, the storage we have on, on the, for the videos we've been putting on the website, that, uh, at the end of the month, those videos, that, a lot of them will be, will be removed. That means the videos that you go and watch and you get, you know, people can watch those videos that we give given freely. They're being given freely. I've not asked anybody to pray for them, but we should have been asked people to pray for them so that we can sustain their thing there. So that's what we're being told is by 30th of, um, June, uh, well, excuse me, of January. If you don't upgrade the budget, they're going to delete a lot of these videos. So it's up to you guys. You know, but you can, one thing you will never Falls before that I tried. <laughs> if anybody has a testimony, we can take the testimony. Testimonies are always God's way of showing you that He is with you. So we are ready for testimonies. Glory be to God.